Replacing a sky is much easier now in Photoshop and the hardest part of this process is picking a sky that matches with our image. It's not the technical process itself. Now we do have some controls over the new sky we introduce but we do need to make the right choice too. The new sky has to look natural when it's partnered with our image. This means we need to have a number of different sky images to choose from. So it makes sense to build yourself a catalog of sky images. They're going to come in handy for many other tasks as well as replacing skies. Now we can work from JPEG images, both the base image and also the skies, but here I've opened a raw file as a smart object. Now that could be an advantage if we need to adjust this image to match a new sky. Now as long as I can retain the smart object status of this thumbnail, any time I need to adjust it, I can double click the thumbnail and it will open up into Adobe Camera Raw and I can do further non-destructive work on it. For now though, let's put in a new sky. I need to go to my edit menu up at the top left and there's the option we need to choose, Sky Replacement. Now whenever this panel appears on screen you may have to wait a few seconds as you can see because it will always apply the last sky that was selected. Now the sky we're looking at here is one of those stock photos that come with Photoshop. So let's take a look at what Photoshop gives us in this drop down panel. As you can see we've got three folders, we've got a series of blue skies, a series of spectacular skies and a series of sunsets. Now what we can also do here is to create our own and that's what I'm going to use here, my own photographs. So I could make a folder structure much the same as this. But for this particular demo I'll just go down to the little folder icon here and I'll just put new skies in here and OK. Now what we can do within the new skies is to go down to the little plus. Now I need to navigate to where my images are stored and for this video I've got them in this folder and in this folder. So there you can see all of the skies. Now, can I select more than one sky? Could I select the first, hold the shift key, and open all of them into that new skies category? Well, clearly we can, and I'll speed up the process, and we'll see them appear. And there they are. So all I need to do now is to select one of them. But earlier on I was talking about picking a sky that is relative to the image in question. Now this has got some warm tones in it, so I'm going to select the sky and there you'll see it put in place. Let me move this out of the way a little bit because we can click and drag the sky a little bit. We don't have much room left and right, but we certainly have room up and down so we can position the sky if we can find a better location than the one that comes up automatically. But of course we can also go back to the skies and we can quickly run through a number of them to find something that maybe works just a little bit better. And as I've come back to this panel you can see the options that we have for the sky we've just put in place. Now it doesn't look too bad straight away does it? Now I've not used all of these sliders to the degree where I can talk about them with some authority. I think you're going to have to try them yourself, mainly because every image is going to be different anyway. But the first two, Shift Edge and Fade Edge, refer to the edge between the sky and the image that we're applying the sky to. Now these two I use quite a bit because the brightness is often quite good just to match the density of the, of the sky with the new image. And here I think the sky may need to go down a little bit, 
and you can see I think it balances a little bit better as a slightly darker example but of course if we've got a warm tone foreground we could warm up the sky using the slider here or cool it down. The scale will scale the sky but it's not going to scale it down only up so I rarely touch that. The flip I think is fairly obvious always worth giving it a touch because sometimes things do seem to work a little better. Here with that um, part of the mask going up into the clear sky on the left I think it works best the way round we've got it here. Now I think the best thing I can say about the lighting mode is just try the other option that's in here, screen. And you can see there's a difference and you can choose which of the options you feel works best. I think this one's working pretty well. We do have some control of the foreground, but remember what I said about us opening this up as a smart object we would have a much better opportunity to make adjustments to the boat and the area it's sitting on if we reopen this up into Camera Raw. Now that brings me down to the option below, the output option. We can output it to a new layer or new layers and we can make a duplicate layer. I'm going to go to new layers here and I'm going to click OK and you'll see that entire group form up on the right hand side. I'm going to tuck them all away because all of those are to do with the sky replacement group. Now of course you could make some adjustments here but we've made those in the software a few moments ago. But of course here I could if I wanted to still double click this, open it up into Adobe Camera Raw and make a change. But here I think it looks pretty good. Now with the spinning round of the screen here I've done a little extra work off camera. You can see now that I've got two sky replacement groups. Here's the original one we looked at a few seconds ago and all I did was to turn this off. Reselecting my image and I applied a different sky. So I've got an alternative. So what we could do is just turn them off and I could go and select another one. We could have three or four. Not a bad idea to do that. If we can save this as a Photoshop file, come back in an hour or two or tomorrow, then we can pick the one that we feel works best. We don't always make our best judgments when we're in full creative flow. But out of the two so far, I think that one works rather well. Now many amateurs become involved in competitions in camera clubs and in those competitions the use of stock photos provided by Photoshop would be considered not cricket because the final image would not be all our own work. Now this is why we should create our own catalogue of skies when we're out and about with the camera. I was out this very morning and added a few more to my list. If you're going to use this replace a sky option, it will be worth putting your skies into categories as Photoshop does with the stock images, because it's going to make it much quicker for you to match the sky to your foreground. Now this is a great option when we need it, but let me leave you with a thought. Why is it that an image captured with its original sky seems to give us more satisfaction than one we've replaced the sky, even when both the images are ours. I'll see you next time.